Hey, what's up guys, and welcome to 61 Paragon. Although Paragon isn't a very popular DPS choice currently because of how strong Reaver is, it's still a very viable melee DPS option that in practice should pull better DPS than Reaver. In this guide, I'll show you where to put your points, which masteries to select, as well as how to play Paragon. So let's go ahead and get started. Looking at the Soul Tree breakdown, you see we do the full 61 points in Paragon. That's because deep in the tree, the 61 and 58 point abilities are really important that you pick up for this build. For the secondary soul, we go 10 in Warlord, that's 5 in Soldier's Might for 10% strength increase, and 5 in Strength of Arms for 10% attack power and weapon damage increase. For the third soul, we go 5 in Tempest, which is a 10% attack power and weapon damage increase. Moving over to the Masteries, level 61, we take Resonating Strikes. This allows your critical hits to apply a 3% max health shield to you once every 6 seconds. Level 62, we take Physiology Proficiency. This is going to make your combat focus buff increase your next 3 casts of Reaping Harvest, which is your finisher by 30% instead of one Reaping Harvest by 50%. Moving up to 63, we take Energy Reserves. This is going to make your damaging abilities have a 33% chance to restore four energy, which is really nice. Level 64, we take Deliberate Strikes. This allows your single target attacks to put a stack of Building Rage on the target. After eight seconds, Building Rage explodes, dealing 4,000 Ethereal damage per stack, stacks up to three times. Pretty big DPS gain there. Level 65, we take Power Manipulation because it is the top DPS ability in this tier. However, if you need some more survivability, uh, you can also swap to power variation for a really strong DPS or AOE DPS cooldown or self heal cooldown. So now I've talked about the Soul Tree and Masteries, guys. Let's go ahead and discuss the macros. So looking at the macros here, you see here at the top we have the Open the Stream macro. This is going to be what you cast at the beginning of each one of your 15 second blocks. Uh, it will cast Setting Moon first, and then it will cast Open the Stream to make sure that your buffs are staying refreshed. Uh, the rest of the macros are going to be all rooted in this macro here. This is going to be your Spammer macro. Uh, it's going to have Final Blessing and Rising Waterfall. These are offhand attacks. Uh, Final Blessing can only be cast sub 30% though. You have Reaping Harvest, which of course is going to be your finisher. And then you have Tranquility, Death Touch, and Steady Moon, which are all builders. And then of course we have the cast itself, Power Manipulation line there, uh, that casts your Power Manipulation line on yourself. Uh, so most of the macros are going to have uh, this, these, this block uh, here in it. So moving on down to this macro here, again, this is going to have that same block we just talked about, but it's going to have your Shifting Blades cooldown at the top. Moving on down, we have the Burst Macro. This is going to be, again, that same single target block in here, starting at Final Blessing, but it's also going to have Alacrity at the top. And then moving on down to the third and, and uh, last important macro here, we have the two-point finisher macro with Combat Focus. Uh, what Combat Focus does is it's going to give you those three combo points, at which point you use Reaping Harvest to consume them. Uh, combat Focus will also allow you to cast a offhand attack after you use it. Uh, so that's why we have the Final Blessing and Rising Waterfall there. You'll cast that, and then you'll hit this macro again to finish. But I'll explain more how this works and why you have to use it this way in the rotation section. And then of course we have the single target macro, which is, again is what all the other macros are based off of. Uh, you're not going to really ever need to use this macro unless you lose your place in your rotation, at which point you'll swap to your E key, uh, which is where this guy is. So now we talked about the macros a little bit, guys, let's talk about the action bar. So starting at the top left, we have the turn the blade toggle buff. Uh, this reduces the duration of the global cooldown by 0.5 seconds and reduces the power, of, or the power cost of abilities rather by 33%. Uh, it also reduces the damage and healing done by 20% as well, so that is kind of a drawback. Uh, moving over, we got Way of the Wind. This is going to, uh, when you hit an enemy with a follow-up attack, such as Rising Waterfall or Final Blessing, uh, or Reaping Harvest, it deals an additional about 3,000 damage or so. Moving over to the right again, we have Way of the River. This increases your physical crit chance by 3%. Enhanced Conductivity increases your damage by 2%. Recovery Posture, Builders Heal for 8% of your attack power. Focus of the Body increases your strength by 85. That's going to be overwritten most of the time. And of course we have power manipulation, which um, you're only going to have to cast this from here one time before you start the fight. After that, it'll be, it'll be maintained by your macros. And of course we have the K alert here. Over to the right, we have six abilities here. These are all just here so that I can show you the tooltip values. Down in the middle bar on the Z key, we have thread the trees. This is going to be your gap closer. It's going to be your charge. That's a 24 meter charge. On the Q key, we have the open the stream macro. On the E key, we have your spam macro that you use in case you lose your place in your rotation. Down on the main bar, we have the Shifting Blades macro here. This is going to be where you're spamming from most of the time. We have the Burst macro here on 2. We have the Combat Focus macro here on 3. We have Grasping the Horizon, which is a very unique skill in that it allows your all of your abilities to be used at range, or 20 meter range, for 15 seconds. So you essentially can have a 50% uptime on range attacks. We have Flurry here, which also has a 20 meter range. It's really nice for um, disconnects, but you can also use it in your rotation for a, a DPS gain. Uh, six, we have the Snare. Seven, we have Sergeant's Order, which is your pull. Eight, we have Wrist Strike, which is a five-second debilitate. Nine, we have a four-second stun. And the middle click, or zero key, we have Flinching Strike, which is your interrupt. Uh, these five abilities here are really strong in PvP, of course. 
And on minus key, we have the standard break free. And the equals key, we have fleet of foot, which is a 45 second cooldown, increasing your movement speed by 50% for 21 seconds. So that's it for the action bar, guys. Let's go ahead and talk about the K alerts briefly. Now, you can track quite a bit with Paragon. There is a lot of stuff that goes on in this rotation. Uh, however, I opted to only track the important stuff. Um, so ignore all of my mechanics-based Kalers here, but over here on the left, you'll see I have the open the stream here. I track that to make sure that that damage over time ability is always up. I also track the duration on Alacrity here to make sure that I'm fitting in as many reaping harvests as I can. And down at the bottom, I have the, the cooldown timer on Alacrity, on combat focus, and on shifting blades, which, which are the main three cooldowns that you get. Shifting blades is a 15 second cooldown, combat focus is a 30 second cooldown, and Alacrity is a one minute cooldown. So as you can probably deduct, or deduce these are 15 second blocks in this rotation so you're going to be using these uh, most of the time together so that's it for the K alerts guys let's go ahead and talk about how to play Paragon the Paragon rotation can be kind of tricky so the first thing you want to do is apply your power manipulation to yourself before the fight starts after that you'll target the boss we're gonna hit our Q key twice once for setting moon and then once for open the stream which is our damage over time ability after that you're gonna move over to your one key to finish with shifting blades and then use tranquility and you're going to hit your one key again for rising waterfall, which will give you your three, atta your three attack points. At that point, you're going to wait for that global cooldown to get almost done, and you're going to move over your two key and start spamming it, which is going to fire off alacrity and reaping harvest at the same time, which is going to be your finisher. And you're going to keep hitting your two key uh, repeatedly about six more times, so you fire off two more reaping harvests. On that last reaping harvest, as soon as you use it, you'll move over to your three key, and you'll hit start mashing it, and it'll fire off combat focus and reaping harvest together, which is another finisher. At that, which point you'll hit three again to fire off Rising Waterfall, and then hit three one more time to use a two-point finisher. The reason you use a two-point finisher here is because you're trying to fit that uh, last reaping harvest into your alacrity block. Uh, sometimes it's going to be difficult to do, especially if you have latency, uh, but it is good to do so. After that, the block gets a little easier. You'll move back to the refreshing your open the stream uh, and setting moon. So you'll hit Q twice again, which will fire setting moon open the stream, and you'll move to your one key. Uh, which you'll consume your shifting blades and then you'll just keep mashing that one key until you need to refresh your open the stream and setting moon again. Uh, so once you get towards the end of that block, uh, you need to refresh this so you, um, you'll get to that last finisher and then you move over to your Q key uh, for the next block and you'll fire this off and then you'll use your combat focus in the same place that you used it in the first block. Uh, it's going to become very apparent once you see what the rotation looks like. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So the first thing you want to do, of course, is make sure that all your buffs are up. After that, you'll target yourself and you'll fire off power manipulation. And then you'll target the boss. Then you're going to hit Q twice. And then you're going to use 1 twice. You wait for that global to be almost done and then start spamming your 2 key. After you use the first finisher, this will be the second finisher. we got one more finisher. And then we're going to move to the 3 keys. So finish. And then now you're going to spam that 3 key. So it's a finisher, 2 point builder, finisher. And then you're going to refresh your dots again and then move back to your 1 key. So very easy. At this point, you're just going to be spamming your 1 key repeatedly. And so you need to refresh your uh, open the stream again. So we're doing pretty good here. We got one more builder finisher before we're going to have to refresh. So now we're going to go back to Q once, Q twice, shifting blades finisher. And now we're going to just keep going with that one key even more. Very, very uh, simple. It's, it is kind of difficult to uh, also finisher and then move into your combat focus. Combat focus again. And then now we're going to go Q, Q, and finish with shifting blades. Um, you can see we're still doing it in the 60s here, and we're about uh, 50 seconds in, so pretty good, especially because I don't have a DPS trinket on this guy. I have just a non procking trinket. So we're going to keep on going. Now we're going to have to go QQ again to refresh our, our stuff there. And then we're going to go ahead and use Shifting Blades 2, and then go back into your burst block. So very simple stuff here. One more, one more builder finisher, and then back into combat focus. And then two point to fit in that last block, and then QQ again. And finish. So see how that works, guys? Pretty easy stuff to do. You can see we're still pulling in the 58.5 or so. Um, it'll, it'll probably settle in roughly 56 to 58 range, depending on RNG. Um, but very easy to maintain. Um, you, you can mess it up fairly easily, though. Um, but if you do get messed up again, you have the single target macro here. to You can spam that in the meanwhile while you're waiting for cooldowns to come back up to get your rotation back on track. Uh, but pretty rewarding play, guys. You can see I was pulling about 58 or so over quite a, quite a long time. And as I mentioned earlier... Um, I don't actually have a procking trinket on this guy, which is worth another 1,000 to 1,500 or so usually. So uh, that would be even more. But uh, but that's it, guys. If you have any questions, as always, please leave them in the comment section. If you have, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.